Sky Heroes Conference, and today I'm going to be doing a review on my 2019 Dodge Challenger Hellcat. Stay tuned, we're going to start off with the nice little full cool engine. Go ahead and do your shape. Pop this bad boy. So, first things first, obviously, I'm not a real mechanic, I'm not an no engine expert. I do not know everything about this engine that you might see under this hood. Go ahead, give me a nice little view. But what I can tell you is obviously that this engine produces 717 horsepower along with 656 pound-feet of torque. Besides that, I mean, I don't really give a hoot about anything else. Obviously, you also know it's a V8, supercharged Hemi. Go ahead and pan it and get that little SRT move from real quick. Ooh, this joint dirty too, no cap. Look at the finger. Oh, that's dusty. Get the supercharged Hemi move. So, I mean, that's pretty much it with the engine. I don't know too much about it. I'm not no real mechanic, so I ain't about to go ahead and spill any foolery to you guys. So... In continuation with the hood, they started doing this obviously in 2019 with the Challenger models. To me, I love this double snorkel. I feel like whenever they had the 2018 below, obviously it was still a vicious, beautiful car, but now I feel like when they added this beautiful snorkel to it, go ahead and get the snorkel. That just changed the definition to me. I feel like it just made the whole Challenger in itself look way more aggressive and way more superior. Lights real quick. Obviously, one of my favorite features of this car is obviously the grill actually looks pretty sturdy. I still actually can't lie, prefer the Charger headlights. I don't know I think they do look kind of more aggressive, but with this double snorkel hood and these lights, I feel like they actually is a pretty aggressive look as well. So we obviously have the SRT, the nice little cute Hellcat emblem on the MOOC in the front. Then if we actually pan it in over here in the close MOOC, we'll go ahead and turn the headlights on so you guys can see the actual Hellcat within the headlights, which I think is pretty fire. So specific to this model, I actually do have the technology package right here in the front. You see, kind of just get that little quick little move -a this little nice little bubble type in the front. At first, once again, I wasn't really a fan of it. I thought it was going to be trash and have something like that in front of my car because from an aggressive standpoint, it doesn't look that cool. But when you actually think about it from a real like technological standpoint what it does for the vehicle, it's awesome, it's major, I love it. So like this technology package actually really is a beneficial feature to have in your vehicle because like plenty of times it caught me by surprise and I thought I really wouldn't need it, but it actually came in handy. One, I do not text and drive, I do not text and drive. I mean, but I was actually changing music one day and the car just stopped right in front of me really abruptly. And luckily enough, I had this nice little calm feature to stop me and let me know that, hey, there's a car in front of you that you need to stop and brake. So whenever a car stops right in front of you abruptly, it will pop up in the dashboard and say brake. So that's pretty clutch. I will give you guys an example, but I'm not about to drive trash for me to do that. So that's a dub. But nonetheless, you get the idea. So that's a pretty cool feature to have. Not something I thought I would use and like, but in actuality, it's actually something that's very beneficial to me in my life. All right, cool. So we talked about the technology package. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the wheels. One of my favorite features about this car, clear as day. So if we come down, yeah, as you see, we have nice little kind of 20 inch by nine rims. These five star vapor wheels are hard. Can't say nothing negative about them. I love them greatly. I think it's something that's really solid for the car to have. I feel like the other um, trims that we have in wheels are pretty solid as well, but these are actually one of my favorites for this style of car. I feel like these fit perfectly with them, so I love it, I can't complain. Now, let's make way to these big ass rim bolt brakes. Word to my Tims, these shits is solid. I ain't never think I would care so much about brakes because I obviously thought every brake is the same as usual. It's going to do what it's supposed to do and that's it. But these six piston brakes right here are probably, I'm assuming, what, what? The largest brakes in the world. If it's not, I'm still going to say it because it sounds cool. Don't hat me, but I love these Brembo brakes. I have nothing to complain about. That's a cap I do, but I'm going to give you guys that review in another uh, video when I do the five things I hate about this car. I don't really hate anything about this car, but obviously there's a few things I dislike about it. I feel as though it could be better. 
So that's probably one of them is not the brakes, but the squeaking that comes about when you do use these brakes at a high speed. Obviously, when you're driving 120 miles plus every day and then you're stopping abruptly all the time on a dime, your brakes are gonna get some wear and tear. So one of the negative things about this is just simply the squeaking that comes along with it. But like I said, I'll go into further review about that in another video for you guys soon coming in the future. So as you see, we got the nice little cute emblem right here, the Hellcat. I dad thought this joint was gonna be way smaller in person because obviously when I look at it on YouTube, it's just small to me. But in person, this joint is actually pretty huge and solid. So I love it. And it's silver. So you know it's a 2019. It's not no 2018 move or whatever the case may be. So I'll make you way to the back real quick. You know what I mean? You got your solid little fuel cap. I'm not serious. I feel like anybody could jig me in my gas if they wanted to, but it is what it is. I hope nobody does that. So now, my favorite thing of this entire car. Sounds crazy, but... This feature, voted. This right here is the best thing Dodge could have done for this narrow body with that. I feel as though if you come in with, if you come in 2019 and above with a narrow body Challenger, I feel like you at least gotta have this nice little duck lip spoiler. I don't fuck them up, but, but this joint is wavy, no cap. I feel like this adds a different type of definition to the car. Obviously, I'm not no real architect and I can't even describe the properly definition and type of different ways that makes it look good but like if you just give them a side view and just really show them how it looks from the narrow body perspective and how it just hangs off the car i feel like this is loaded that nobody can clear to it like this should inspire because in other challenger models obviously it comes way more like right here on the edge type and it just pops up and it makes it look kind of weak but this nice little wide body type duckless spoiler looks fire and i love it i obviously didn't expect this car out this, is, this was a used car, I bought it, it had 6,000 miles on it, but the way that it's trimmed out is beautiful and I couldn't have made it any better. And obviously, I'm, we didn't even talk about the most important feature of this car, is the damn exterior of it. It's red, bright as hell. I did not choose that color at first. I didn't even think to get a red vehicle, but now, I love it. It's obviously an attention seeker. It's obviously something that everybody attracts to it immediately as soon as you drive down the block. Even on a dull, cloudy day like this, this car still stands out in the most way and it looks beautiful. I'm not gonna lie to you. I love this car, so by the way. So I mean, I think that pretty much wraps it up for the exterior standpoint of the vehicle. Of course, you got the 275 tires. A lot of people seem to not like these. I don't know why. Me personally, I don't really care. They do the job. I already understand with 717 horsepower, you're not really gonna get any traction to the ground no matter what. Like 315s, 305s, I don't think it's gonna make a difference. Your wheels gonna spin regardless, but obviously for a little bit more traction, 305s, 315s will be solid, but I mean, these three, these 275s ain't bad for me. I'm just rambling on crazy about the um, spoiler. Like I said, Aspire is amazing. I love it. And I'll talk about the quick little trunk space that you guys get with this 2019 Dodge Challenger Hellcat. Don't mind all the rags, you know what I mean? I act like I know how to wash cars, I don't. But as you see, you get a decent amount of um, trunk space for real, for real. Like, if you want to come clean, I could climb in the real quick. Let me show you guys something real quick. Uh, yo, I'm 6'3", by the way. Ooh, for throw. Oh, I'm bugging. All right, this is a dub. <laughs> this shit mad tight. But nah, if I really want to not get dirty and shit, like if I didn't care about what I had on, I could definitely get in there without a problem. I could definitely lay it down. I feel like two humans for sure could stay in there. Five, six, and below tight. Maybe three if you really want to force it, but that's up to you. Then you obviously got the nice little calm Dodge right here. Come focusing on that real quick. Yeah, bow. These tail lights, they sturdy. I don't know why. It's gonna sound like I really don't like this car, <laughs> but I love this car, I'm telling you. But I do feel like Dodge Chargers have Challengers beat from an exterior standpoint when it comes to the taillights and the headlights. I feel like they just look way more aggressive and solid in some in some cases. So I'm gonna just give you guys a little quick startup. Obviously you got the Hellcat key right here. Nice little red MOOC, SRT on the MOOC. Full of bam. So you're gonna have to just click that bad boy twice. And let's hear that joint start up. jump into the interior of the vehicle and talk about that so follow me so i'm gonna come all the way clean this interior is really solid like it's not bad like i thought it would be i thought it was gonna be very cheap and just chaga but this shit is pretty smooth the interior is soft as ever yo and it actually feels mad elite like i actually feel like i'm in something that's like of high end 
Like it doesn't, it's not obviously not luxury, it's not luxurious, but this car for sure is solid and it's right. The car feels good. The seats are way more comfortable than I thought. Oh, that sounds nice. But I remember when I heard people talking about this car and then the seats, I thought they was capping crazy about how comfortable it feels. But like, yo, I'm really bolstered up for real and I feel cozy as shit. Like the interior, obviously, the joint is bolstered up from a standpoint, it's solid, not bad at all. Everything in here is soft, even the top. I never had like no black, I guess. Obviously it's not suede, it's just some type of cloth. But it's actually smooth, it's clean, it's cozy. It's not bad at all. I love it. So we obviously, you know, you got your nice little, whatever these are, I don't even know. So then boom, sturdy already. I wish these were LED though. I feel like them having yellow lights is trash. I don't know why they would do that, but it's an American car, so of course. And of course I do have the sunroof. So uh, yeah, you got that joint. I do it down like that. You already know how that shit go. I'm not about to play with the sunroof. So then, SRT, of course, right here, stitching the mook with a nice little kitty itty. That's pretty cute. You guys obviously have your, um, got your nice little rear, rear view cup holders. Don't see the point in that because nobody's sitting behind me. As you can see, I damn near drive in the back seat, so that's pointless. But, I mean, you can actually really for, for sure sit at least three people in here that's even like six foot plus on each end so i'm obviously six three so i can sit here perfectly fine nobody can sit behind me but if somebody was a passenger and they would sit like six three six four whatever they'd be cozy as long as they put the seat up a little bit and then somebody six two and below could definitely sit back there without a problem so i feel like that's solid i must reiterate again everything inside this car feels soft like this is not no rough feeling car like i feel cozy i really feel like i'm in somebody's crib right now on a nice little cozy couch cooling out i love it Got the nice little calm SRT in the goddamn interior so you know what you're driving. Because you need to make sure that you know what you're driving when you're spending 75000 plus dollars on a vehicle. You know what I'm saying? That's a big ticket for no reason. Well, obviously, it's for a reason, though, because this car got a lot of power. And get to it straight to this goddamn infotainment system. Off rip, you obviously have your XM radio. Let's make sure we turn the music down because we do not need copyright. So then we have the XM sound, all that cute stuff. Got your media, that's for your phone if you obviously want to do Bluetooth or you do USB, aux, so on and so forth. Then you have your phone once again for all the contacts, all that cool stuff. You got your recents, you got your contacts, you got your keypad, all that good stuff. Pay your phone, obviously. Then obviously, of course, the infamous you connect apps. You have your travel link, you have your passenger heated, cooling, SOS, SRT modes. Just so y'all know, you already know there's a T modes is the car is parked, relax, that's the reason why it's an eco. Well, you already know we put it straight to sport and it's a different type of beast so then in continuation let's go back to you connect apps passenger vent assist again driver heat driver vent project projection manager you have to go activate services don't really know what that is don't really care i just want to drive the car then you got the wi-fi hotspot vehicle user guide let's continue on you have notifications heat steering wheel climate market mirror dimmer controls nav ssm and then uh, app manager, media, phone, and you have your settings and you have your audio settings. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys want me to deep dive deep into that. Maybe one day if you guys request it in the comments down below, if you really want me to go deep into the infotainment system, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen plenty of Hellcat reviews, but if you would like me to, I'll go ahead and do a further dive into all the Uconnect apps and all the fun stuff that it offers. So obviously we go back to the SRT mode, you have your auto. Every time you turn the car on, that's the first thing that's gonna pop up is auto, which is eco. I don't even think it cuts the power down to 500. Maybe it does, I'm not quite certain. If it does, then that's why I guess it saves gas, clearly. Let's bring it to the, yo, bring it to the gas real quick, right? Let me see this. This is where Dodge got me all the way messed up. But obviously, you buying a Hellcat, so you know exactly what the hell comes with it. Look at how the car damn near is full. Look at the range. 150 miles, and I have damn near a full tank. 150 miles is not getting me to like, another state and back <laughs> like yo i'm really got yo i'm not gonna talk about it, but you're gonna stand the gist that's why obviously when you buy this car you know i mean you know you're not buying it for no gas savers no miles or none of that so do not complain about that ticket when you gotta pump some gas into this car because it actually is not even that expensive though i just filled up i was probably like a little bit below half and i only paid like 37 dollars 35 23 to be exact that's not a lot this is the consistency at which you're gonna be putting a lot of money into this car with the gas. Like, you probably have to take a trip to the gas station like every other two two days or so. So, I mean, that's all you, depending on how you drive. I clearly do not drive an eco. I do not drive with common sense. I drive like an ignorant young man. 
I'm only 22, I don't care. So I'm gonna drive fast, but responsible, of course. So now obviously continuing with this SRT move, move. You have your custom. Custom basically is sport, but traction is on. So if I switch to sport, you can see the traction now been switched off to sport, which means the traction is off. That means I can literally do a donut in like 2.2 seconds right now if I want to, but we're not gonna do all that. Then you have track. Track pretty much, to me, just makes the car feel way more balanced. You feel every single bump in the road, little crack, crevice, anything, you're feeling it all. Then you have sport once again, custom, auto, and that's it. We like to drive the sport. That's my mode. That's my mode for choice every day I drive. And then obviously if it's raining or anything like that, the roads are where I choose custom, so I keep the traction on street and we're sturdy and safe. So let me go back to the performance pages for you guys that are really car brain type of young men. All right, so boom, you got it. You got the home. So you have your horsepower. Oh my God, 24. Boost pressure, G-force, current gear, park. Timers, so I'm assuming that's like your zero 60s, quarter miles, all that good stuff. I haven't done any of that clearly because I'm not going to the track anytime soon to do this, but maybe one day I will. Then you have your gauges, oil temp, oil pressure, coolant temp, battery voltage. Next page we have, if I can touch it, and then uh, you got your performance pages again. What, what is this? Let's see it. I'm assuming this is like, I'm not about to say anything goofy because I don't know what that is. <laughs> but then once again, you have your power, your torque, boost pressure, all like in a more clear state, I guess, for you guys to see it. And of course, if you guys want to take this joint to a dyno, go crazy. Let's see it. Do it again. Oh, Chile, that goddamn torque and power is something serious. So yeah, all right, cool. Let's bring you guys to the cluster right now so you guys can see the speedometer and everything like that. As you can see, you have your speed speedometer right there. See how, many, how fast you're going per mile. And then you obviously have your speed warning. You have your diagnostic. You have your screen setup. You have your messages. You have your audio if you have anything connected. You have your trip info. Like I said, I brought the car at 6,000 miles and now it has 7,833. I only get 11 miles per gallon because I'll be driving like a goofy. Then you have your fuel economy range is now at 148 that's crazy i didn't even go anywhere it just started at 150 that's crazy then you have your driver assist then you have your performances again with the 0 to 60 0 to 100 1 8 1 4 breaking distance your current g-force levels your peak g-force levels and then you have your lap time along with your lap history and then your top speed i know you did not just see what i just saw but yeah that's actually what i did i'm not gonna lie to you one day on the highway I was having a grand old time and your boy said, fuck it, let's go ahead and reach that top speed. <laughs> and we done hit the 178 move. But I mean, it is what it is, cause I'm alive, so that's all that matters. So if you look down here, obviously you have your different gauges for your lights and whatnot. You have your auto. This is like for daytime, it's pretty much the orange halos that's gonna be present every time. Those other three options, don't really know, don't really pay attention to that, I don't use it, so I don't find it to be anything necessary. And this is what you guys are gonna look at every day when you drive this vehicle though. Obviously we change the speed. Oh yeah, of course, then you have your tire pressure, PSIs, all that cool stuff, and then back to your speedometer. So this is what the car looks like. Pretty much still daylight, so I mean, you're not gonna be able to see the red SRT just yet. I'll give you guys a nice little night view of that so you guys will see that when it comes about at night. SRT, of course, is on the feet, just so you know that you are an SRT. Like I said, you have your nice little cup holder right here. It's pretty solid. Then you have a nice little random one right here. I usually keep my face mask in here now. It's crazy to even say that. I can't believe that's a norm. The fact that I have that face mask right here, it's pretty crazy. Car also does come with the Harman Kardon system. I'm gonna be quite, 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 quite honest with you guys. The Harman Kardon sounds solid, but I don't think it's as solid as the Bose sound system that I have in my Maxima. I feel like my Maxima sounded way more elite and was definitely way more premium in my opinion when it came to sound. But once again, we're, just to reiterate, these seats are soft as ever. They're really plush, they're really firm, they're really solid in all ways possible. I really love these seats, I can't say it enough. And obviously you have a nice little uh, glove compartment. Pretty sturdy, not much stuff that you can do with it. It's pretty, it is what it is. Back seat is what it is once again. Let me just go ahead, go out, and give you guys a nice little solid standpoint. SRT, Hail Kitty, sunroof and all.
right, so that was my review on my 2019 Dodge Challenger Hellcat. That was my regrade version of the review. It's pretty trash, but we're gonna get better, so don't worry about it. But as always, like, comment, subscribe, share, do whatever you want to do. Like the video, dislike the video, hate on it, love it, give me some critique. I love it, I appreciate it all. Um, next video on the way, I don't know what it should be. Probably it's gonna be the mid-month with the day. I think we'll do the mid-month with the day, like next week, maybe. Not even too much of shit tomorrow. So yeah. Other than that, y'all stay tuned, we got more content on the way. Boom, boom!